En ik ga praten met Tatjana de Rone over haar nieuwe boek Onvoltooid Verhaal. Het is nu net, ze gaf het me net, want ze heeft het net zelf in de bijenkorf. Hij is een paspoort kwijt in Frankrijk en in Frankrijk moet je dan tegenwoordig een enorme toestand, administratieve toestand. No, but I'm just introducing you and telling something. Can you hear me? No. The no. no. microphone doesn't work. But I go on in Dutch. Maybe I need to press. Oh, here. Can you hear me now? Oh. Uh, die man die moet dus een nieuw paspoort krijgen. Hij blijkt van Russische afkomst en hij ontdekt dingen over zijn vader, over familiegeheim. En hij gaat daar een boek over schrijven. Zoals zij dat natuurlijk heeft gedaan met haar naam was Sarah. Hij wordt wereldberoemd en hij kan met die roem eigenlijk geen kant op. Het is een boek over identiteit, over ijdelheid en over nog veel meer. En daar ga ik met haar over praten. En ik ga beginnen met de stomste vraag die je kunt voorstellen. Want, wel, welkom. Dank je. Wel, ja, geef je haar. Your main character discovers that he is Russian and uh, he needs a passport. And he writes about he writes about his father who disappeared. Well, he becomes very famous. Um, there's one problem. All the journalists that interview him ask the same silly question. And most of the times it's the opening question of an interview. I'm sorry about that. And what's the question? How did you get the idea to write this book? <laughs> Here we are. I had to talk about that. Yeah, after your... People, actually, it's a question that every author gets asked, whatever that author writes. I'm sure that's what you asked the young man just before me, although I don't speak no, Dutch. No, I didn't, I didn't. You didn't? No. You didn't ask him why he, you wrote the book? he wrote the book? No. Okay. My questions are even sillier. Uh, oh, really? I, I, prefer, I prefer to Try ask. Try ask me well, a silly question. I, pre I prefer to ask him. But, but first of all, why is it a silly question? No, it's actually it's not a silly question at all. Um, the hero of this book, Nicola, is a young man um, that success has changed in the sense that he wrote a book that was sold. I think he even beat Fifty Shades of Grey, which I think is also published in your yeah. country. Um, so this, this book has, has made him into a, a literary star. And he gives interviews after interviews after interviews. And as he does nothing but these interviews and he's not writing anything else, he begins to get bored with that question. Yeah. How did you get the idea to write this book? Which is a very legitimate and normal question that journalists ask. So, frankly, I'm not bored with it. Ne never? <laughs> no, never. What was the most boring <laughs> question you ever were asked? The most boring thing is when the journalists have not read the book. And that happens <laughs> a lot. And they, the worst thing is, is that they pretend that they've read the book. Yeah. Like, for example, um, about her name was Sarah. Um, I think maybe some of you have read it here. Yes. Could you raise, read it, could read you raise it. your hands? Well, wow. Okay. We, we're talking about a bestseller. So, <laughs> one journalist in France who was doing a live TV with me in the morning on one of those morning shows, you know, and he said, oh yes, I've read your book. And I immediately understood that he had not read it because for, he started to summarize the book in a way that I immediately knew that this was not my book and that he was inventing the end. And we were on live television and I said to him, you never read the book, have you? And he, you know, he became absolutely white underneath his makeup. <laughs> and he said, well, I read half of it. And I said, how could you interview somebody if you haven't read the book? So live on television, yes. he did that. And, he and was what, was his, what was his reaction <laughs> afterwards? He was so embarrassed. He said, I should have told you. I said, yes, you should have. 
why didn't you? He said, because I don't know why it didn't seem professional. And I said, no, it wasn't. So a lot of these journalists do not read, I know you read mine because you told me. <laughs> there it is. All right. Um, but you'd, you'd be surprised at the amount of journalists who don't read the books and who pretend that they've it read it. That's the worst. If they said, oh, I'm sorry, I haven't had time to read your book, let's do the interview anyway, you'd think, okay, we'll try. But when they pretend, that's the worst thing. Uh, how did you get the idea for this book? <laughs> when, no, I went to have, when, I went, when I went to have my passport renewed, so I'm, I'm French, born in France, but of two parents who are not born in France. My father's born in Mauritius, and my mother's born in Rome. And there's a new law in France which makes you have to prove your French nationality if your parents are, are born abroad. And this had never happened to me in my life, so I had to get all these, this paperwork out uh, to prove that my parents were indeed born, uh, allowed to be French. It was a very long and complicated process, and it's when I was sitting in that rather sinister place that I, that I described, the, the pôle de la nationalité française, which really exists. Can you describe that place with people who this, didn't read your book? This place, um, it's a bit like, I suppose, going to the social security. You know, you take a ticket and you have to wait for hours with all these people around you who are reading or looking at their iPhones or feel, feeling desperate because they have to prove that they're French and they don't know how to do it. Then how do you prove that you're French? You know, I, I don't know. And I, I spent about five time, five di hours in all in that very gloomy place to have to prove that I was French. And I'm, we don't have enough time for me today to explain how I did end up proving. But I, I am French, and it's true. I can have I, have, I have my passport, and I can I can show it to you, Monsieur Hollande. Will certify that I'm a French citizen. But that's how the idea was born. I thought the beginning of the book will come from this young man who will have to prove that he's French because his two parents are not born in France. That's how the beginning of the book came, but the rest of the book is more about how writers write, how they get their ideas for books, and, and how the writing process occurs. Why did you want to write a book about that? A book about writing? Because that's what it is. Well, it was a challenge. Um, it's not a difficult subject. Uh, it's not an easy subject. It's a difficult. Yes, subject. it's a very difficult subject. And I what thought, makes it, what makes it so difficult? Because writing is something that you can't really describe. I mean, you can see somebody writing a book. Okay, you can watch somebody writing a book. But I wanted to describe the actual process that goes on in the mind, how the idea comes to a writer, and how this idea is transformed and becomes a book. Mm -hmm. the, the whole digestion of the idea and how it ends up on the paper. And that's what I wanted to try and describe. So this young man, he gets the idea for his book the same way that I did, because his passport had to be renewed and he realized that his father was not exactly who he thought he was. But that's just the beginning of the book. The whole book is really about where do we get ideas? And at the end of the book, I think that, I hope my readers will understand that writers are a little bit like vampires. I mean, you're all there looking at me today, but I'm also looking at you. What if such an episode is really frightening? What if you enter a real dark place? I have already written very dark books. Uh, one of which has not been published here in Holland because my publisher who's here finds it very frightening. Uh, uh, it's what called, kind of book are we talking about? It's called La Mémoire des Murs, which means technically the, the memory of walls, how, how places harbor um, what's happened there. And this book is a very small book, but the writing process for it was uh, very dark. And I had to be able to express this darkness within me, which was technically difficult because I also knew that the book was um, dangerous in the sense that it wasn't going to be a commercial, happy, easy book. I knew I was already embarking on something which could disconcert and which did. Uh -huh. But they're not going to publish it? Well, we'll, have to, we'll see. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, it, maybe it's a book that... But you had to describe this dark... Yeah, it was like, I'll, I'll, I'll use another image. Usually when I write a book, I more or less know where I'm going. But this book, 
this one, the one that doesn't exist in Holland, okay, that one. It was like I was sticking up a little stethoscope. I was, in, I was a submarine, and all of a sudden, I was looking out onto a dark sea that I, I had no idea where I was, but it was very, very frightening, and I had to what express made it so, what that made it, what, what made it so frightening? Because this book is about, um, it, it touches on very dark elements about losing children, things like that. It's also actually a book that opened the door to Her Name Was Sarah. If I hadn't written that book, I wouldn't have written Her Name Was Sarah. So it's got nothing to do with Sarah, but earlier on I was talking about the paths that writers take in their minds to write books. And if I hadn't gone down that dark path, I wouldn't have written Her Name Was Sarah. Are you obsessed with family secrets? Obsessed. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's the word. Obsessed. Yeah? Oh, yeah. And now you're going to ask me what my family secrets are, right? <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you why family secrets are so important. That's the same question. <laughs> you're right. So what do we do? <laughs> you have to give an answer. I'll say this, that one day, this book, this book already touches certain elements of a, an important family secret. I had an uncle who was lost at sea, like Nicola's father was lost at sea. We never found his body. His life was a complete mystery, like Nicola's father. I've already answered some questions in this book, but I know that in the years to come, there is a book that I need to write about my true family secrets, but I'm going to wait for a bit. But that's interesting. What came first, the passport? You had to renew, or the uncle? Both. Both. The passport was a spark. Then the idea of writing about the writing process, how writers write. And then writing about Arnaud, my uncle, who was lost at sea. Fyodor Kolchin, Nicolas' father, is Arnaud. He looks ex ex exactly like him. Um, he has his character. It was like me being able to resuscitate my uncle on the paper, which is what I did. But why do you want to write a book about your uncle? Because he had an extraordinary life. He was an extraordinary person. And he disappeared at sea at age 37 uh, on a windsurf. He was a big, a big windsurfer, famous windsurfer. And we never found his body. And you know, when somebody never comes back, you can imagine everything. That that person is having another life elsewhere, that that person is, just, you can imagine that that person was killed, or that person decided to die, or that that person decided not to come back. The door is open to everything. Uh -huh. It's an unfinished. Uh -huh.